What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're going on a tow to Salt Lake to pick up a couple of brand new tow truck bodies at Rocky Mountain Record Sales. So let's take off and get up there. First stop, we had to get breakfast at two o'clock in the afternoon and I forgot the boss's ice cream, so I'm gonna go back and get an ice cream now. Here's your ice cream. So we're headed to Rocky Mountain Record Sales in Salt Lake City, Utah. We paint all of their brand new tow truck bodies and then we end up taking them back and delivering them to them. So the simplest way to haul two is we take the tow truck and we go pick them up, bring them back to the shop, we disassemble them, we paint them, and then we take them back to them. We just need to hurry and unbolt this cross member so that it'll sit flat on the truck. gonna get this strap down three straps per body and then we're getting on the road i have one more strap and then it'll be all ready to go we'll be out of here all right we've got everything loaded we've got the two beds on it's all strapped down all the little pieces are in the box it's time to get out of here i've got danny behind the camera tonight what's up guys danny's my good buddy you guys will get to know him in the future we're gonna head out we're gonna go grab some dinner on the way home and then we're headed back to the shop i'm gonna take the boss to dinner we're gonna meet up with danny and riel don't fall hi Danny all right it's the next day we just got dispatched on an accident so we're gonna hurry and get these things lifted off and then we're going on a wreck we just gotta hurry because I told dispatch that we'll have the truck unloaded in 10 minutes and I don't think that's gonna happen so we just gotta hustle hurry and get this thing unstrapped on the road. Hello everyone. How's everyone doing? I'm doing good. I hope everyone has a great day because I am. Fork's got to go all the way in. All I'm doing is just going to hook it here. Okay, tell him to come in. Gotta hustle. <laughs> Especially when you gotta go on a wreck. They got the road blocked off or whatever, you don't know until you get there. I'm gonna jump. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah! <laughs> Careful. Don't let me fall. This ain't OSHA approved. <laughs> hey, as long as you got a strap around you, you're good. Good, get her down. Yeah. Take that in the back and we're out of here. All right, we've got it unloaded and we're headed. We got a full crew today. We got the main boss. Hi. We've got the little boss in training, Adley. We've got Lincoln in the middle and we got Big Dinner. He's gonna be filming. Hi. What's up, Dinner? <laughs> How's it going? We're headed to a little town called Gunnison, Utah. Don't really know what to expect. All we have is an address, so that's where we're headed. We're going on a trip in our favorite rocket ship. Zooming through the sky. <laughs> But nobody knows what that song is. <laughs> Nothing too crazy. We're just going to get it loaded up, sweep the road, and we'll be out of here. Will it start? <laughs>
it's all strapped down. We got the road clean. Let's get back in the truck and let's head out of here. Got the car all loaded up. Everything was successful as they are usually on accidents. Dinner was big help. You mean it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Camera died, so we're back in the shop. We're in the office. Everything went good with that accident. We got it all cleaned up. We're gonna roll into a uh, shop walk around. We're gonna show you guys all the projects that we've got going on this week, and then we're gonna get to some Q&A. We're gonna start by showing you guys this new banana that just came in. This time it's the form of a Tacoma. Not really sure what happened, but it appears to me like it hit a tree of some sort. There's some wood stuck in the door jam. So I'm just gonna assume that this thing hit a tree. This truck over in the corner is that white Ford Dually that we had on the last video. It's waiting on parts. Those back ordered parts are just becoming a nightmare. We got the blue Jeep Tic Tac Towmobile. We've got a vehicle that got towed in this morning. This one actually was at the shop for three months. It went home a month ago, but it sat here for two and a half months waiting on parts from Hyundai. Unfortunately, it's back, but those deer are out in force this time of year. Got the Ford. It's gonna head to Rhino Lining tomorrow. Get a bed liner put in it. Got this thing all wrapped up. We got us a little job over here. Nothing too crazy. Got to get that thing going. It needs a bumper and a headlight, nothing too big. We got a truck that's finished up in our wash bay. It's gonna be getting detailed up tomorrow by Joe. Blue Equinox right here, waiting on parts. Who would have thought? And then right behind me, we've got a cat roof panel for a big tractor. This is one of you awesome viewers came out of Idaho. Thank you for bringing it all the way down to us. We're gonna get that thing fixed up and back to you as soon as possible. Got a few things going on in here. Got some parts right here for that Honda Accord back in the body shop. We got some YouTubers Jeep right here. Not sure who that is. Right behind me, just like like magic, we have one of the tow trucks already painted. We'll get to that in another video. Got a white truck over here. That's just about a complete repaint. We're gonna be spraying that one tomorrow. A Kia Optima over here getting a front end paint job in the morning. Then we've got one in the booth. Anyway, that kind of wraps up what we've got going in the shop. We're gonna roll right into a couple questions from you guys. Nova Vroom Vroom, Hillbilly. What of brand of blinker fluid do you guys use? Question mark, question mark, question mark. We're supposed to use blinker fluid? Duh. You um, never check the blinker fluid? No. <laughs> Why my blinkers don't work? Thomas Taranowski, sweet video. I kind of want a recap of how Hillbilly got that skid steer going. Was he hitting a primer bulb at the end? It's, it's kind of like a primer bulb. It sits on top of the filter and it's just a shaft you push down to prime the filter to get the fluid into the filter. So would you consider that a like primer a bulb? Kind of. <laughs> so yes, he was hitting a primer bulb at the end. <laughs> All right, Ein Chara Jar. Maybe a stupid question, but has Hillbilly appeared in some TV show or something before? I swear he looks and sounds so familiar, but I cannot put my finger on it. If I have, you need to let me know because I don't know of any that I've been in. Maybe cops? Yeah, maybe cops. That'd be my brother. <laughs> Never been in films? Just this one and the derby one that didn't get nowhere. David Mascari. Is Hillbilly Canadian? No, I. You're not Canadian, eh? No, I. <laughs> okay. No, he's not Canadian. I'm from this town, Mayberry. What? Huh? Okay. It's off of Andy <laughs> Griffith. <laughs> yeah. Mayberry's where they live. All right. If you guys have any more questions for Hillbilly and want them answered, ask us in the comments. We'll do this in a couple of weeks again. Okay. You want to know, just ask. Gadget said, did dinner steam his hand? No. Wait, it looked like no. it in that last episode. I, I got close to it, but I didn't. Mm, they're dirty. A little dirty from work. I those mean, are work hands, but no hands. burns. No burns. Whoa. Do you know what that means? You see those hands? Dirty hands means clean money. It looks like it's not it hitting your hand, but it's not. Yeah. So the steamer, you can actually hit your hand with steam up into about two inches away. When the steamer's about this close, it'll burn you. But right here, it doesn't burn. It'll, it'll do more than burn you. It'll, yeah, it'll disintegrate your hand. It'll mess your hand up. It'll disintegrate your hand. <laughs> Willow Ely said, is dinner related to you or just a friend employee? Dinner's my daddy. <laughs> just really good friends. Like I like I said in the one last Q&A video, I've been here for eight years, and it's I mean they, I mean you can consider him pretty much family. This is your home. <laughs> I turn it Doctor out. Internet G. <laughs> Doctor Internet G. <laughs> Doctor Internet G. G. You didn't say what dinner's role is. I'm an R and I specialist. When the wrecked car comes in, I tear it down and figure out all the damage and then when it's painted I reinstall it all and take it to the detail bit. And he does a very very good job of that. He wears many hats but that's <laughs> just his biggest sombrero. Sombrero. Biffa69 says where's dinner? Hope he's okay. Dinner where you at? I'm right here. You okay? Yep. Some of you might ask actually like 55 of you asked <laughs> 
where dinner is. This is a full-time collision shop. Dinner has a very important role inside the shop, so he's not always on the jobs that we're filming. At different stages, dinner's doing his job, either taking apart or putting together. A lot of times, if there's body work that's going on, he's just not in the shot. It doesn't mean we don't disclude him. He's just busy doing other stuff, but we're gonna keep him around and make sure he's in a lot more videos. I'm gonna try to be in as many videos as I can. I, I like the comments you guys give me. It makes puts a smile on my face every day. I, I love every minute of it. This one's from Eric Olson. Hey viewers, I have a 2018 Nissan Titan. I would be traveling from Salt Lake to the Grand Canyon. Any suggestions for the grill guard or for deer protection? Looking for low cost option. I think Hillbilly should not. Spray. Yeah, yeah. Build your own. Hillbilly built himself a pointed bumper. We're gonna have to find a picture of this thing because he swears it saved his life. And that's a hitting a tree at 65 plus miles an hour. I don't know if you'd want to put that on an Nissan Titan. <laughs> on a serious note, carid.com, you can find any kind of push bumper you want for your Nissan Titan. This one's from Bikes and Things. Hey Robbie. Hey. What happens if you spend all the all that time in stripping the vehicle to asses? Assess. Oh, assesses the damage and the insurance company decides scrap it due excess cost. How do you recap or recoup your cost? So when we do a teardown for a potential total loss, we are not the adjusters, so we don't know if it's a total loss or not. So we do what's called a 100% teardown. And then if it totals, the auction actually pays us for our time. We don't lose out on it. It's not like it's a waste. It's part of the process and we do get paid for it. Mr. Panda, <laughs> where do you guys, where, where do you get your paint supplies? Westco, best supplier there is. 75 locations and moving on up. They're buying moving jobbers out all the time. Yeah, moving on up. <laughs> this one's from 46 Rambo. Are you going to paint the Rubicon yellow too? Never liked high gloss on the hood, especially in Colorado and Utah with the sun glare off the hood. I guess you'll have to wait and find out. Okay, this one's from David. How do you keep from getting a rough edge around the paint mask? When I traded in my car, they checked for that line to see if any body work had been done. Let me show you how. Remember this little trick? That's called the soft edge. It doesn't leave a hard line. So when they go to touch the edge to see if it's been painted, they don't fill it. If you tape it off, you get what's called a hard line. Then you can fill the edge. That's why we've doubled the tape over and we use a soft edge so you can't tell it's been painted. This next one's from TJR Arthur. What's the wired blow gun you have? What does it do? Been meaning to ask. I think you're talking about the stack gun. What it does is it creates negative and positive ions and then the air blows those onto the panel and it neutralizes the panel from static. It's a very, very good tool. Andrew McAllister. McAllister. Robbie, can you touch on solvent pop and a little more in depth? I was doing a rattle can job on some ribs and had to start all over. I followed the can instructions. Also, is there spray paint that get close to the hardness of automotive paint? Two answers. Solvent pop is when you don't allow the solvents to evaporate out of the paint before capping it with another coat. So you always wanna give everything a proper flash time so those solvents will remove themselves from the base coat, give it longer flash time. As far as rattle can, you can go to a jobber and you can have them put automotive grade paint in a Spray Max can. And that's gonna be as good as automotive paint, but anything Krylon, anything out of a rattle can from like a Walmart or something like that, it's just nowhere near as good as automotive paint. Toolman for HVAC. Hey Robbie, hey. will the gas gauge work now? That's above my pay grade. There's no gauge in it. <laughs> Where the cows knock on the tank and see if it's hollow or not. Hope it doesn't run out of gas when we drive it. <laughs> Foreshadowing. Budman 1. Fab Rats is almost done with the nugget. The banana looked great. I just want to know if the nugget is going to be yellow or is it going to be gold? Yes? Is the golden nugget called the yellow nugget or the golden nugget? <laughs> yeah. mm. I'm on fire! <laughs> Next one's David T. Question. Why didn't you cut the driver's side hood louver out of the hood? I thought Matt wanted heat to get out from under the hood. So to be honest, I kind of wondered the same thing. Uh, so I actually asked Matt and what he explained to me is he didn't want that super hot air coming out of inside the engine compartment and going straight into his intake that goes right back into the motor. So we left that blocked off so that when the air comes across the hood, it's not at 400, 500 degrees going straight into his intake. That was by design. That was Matt's decision. And so we just followed what Matt wanted us to do. I'll link to the video where that explanation actually is so you can go back and watch it and you can hear it straight from the cat's mouth. Chuck Spain, why didn't the door handles go black? Why didn't you paint them black? Everybody's <laughs> asked this. If you look right here, this one is black. Originally the banana had four yellow handles and one black handle. So I just put it back to the way it was and that was that. 
You guys should go tell Matt that you want him black because it's not too late. Drop a comment on Matt's videos, any video, all of his videos. Let him know, say, hey, Matt, we want those handles black. If you guys spam him enough, I'll paint him black. Jasper118, is it bad that we're all super happy your Jeep broke? I mean, that rebuild series is gonna be awesome. Is it bad that I'm super excited it broke too? <laughs> and maybe I helped break it? I'm actually super excited for a rebuild video. We've already got a few things coming. We've got Barnes four wheel drive hooking us up with a lot of suspension parts. So you're not gonna wanna miss that series. I've even got a special guest, <coughs> Matt from Matt's Off-Road Recovery, is gonna help me put that suspension in. Leonardo da Vinci. How did you get your broken Jeep down the mountain after shattering the driveline? Only the most awesome recovery vehicle in the entire planet, Trailmator. He came up and rescued me and pulled me down the mountain. Straight truck, no chains, no nothing. Oh yeah, most awesome truck I've ever seen in my life. It's awesome for a Chevy, and I don't like Chevys. No chains, straight Shots truck. Shots fired. Built, not bought. Alan H. Do you even have time to sleep anymore? What exactly is sleep? I could probably use a little. Could you guys send me some sleep? That'd be cool. What if they send you a bottle of sleeping pills? Oh, no. no, not... <laughs> Melatonin. Sorry. Not actually. That was a joke. Ha ha. No sleeping pills. I do get a few hours of sleep a night. Maybe one. The next one's James W. Using the hood as an example, how is repair versus replace determined in most cases? So repair versus replace is determined based off of the hours at $50 an hour or whatever your labor rate might be. You take that labor rate, times it by hours and see which is gonna be cost effective. If it's cheaper to repair it versus replace it, then you repair it. If you have a six hour dent and you have a $250 hood, it's gonna be cheaper to change the hood than fix it. So it all just depends case by case, whether you're gonna repair or replace, but we always look at that and we analyze the parts. If it makes sense to fix it, we fix it. If it makes sense to replace it, we replace it. All right, the next one is from the Capture Band. Matt has the banana. Does that mean Robbie has the cherry? Well, they are fruits of y'all's labor, JS. Just saying. How about you guys give me some ideas on what I should name my Jeep, not fruit related because I don't want to copy Matt. So I like the idea of the cherry, but we're probably going to end up painting that thing blue. As part of our build series, we're going to build the whole thing and then we're going to paint it. So when we get to that point, we're going to be getting a lot of input from you guys because you guys are who we're building it for. Drop us a comment. Let us know what you think we should name it or if we should just keep it the Jeep. I think he should do it like his derby cars and call, name it Thunderstruck. Well, that's what Hillbilly thinks. What do you think? I think it should be pink, and we should name it Barbie. <laughs> pink and black. Nice. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know about that. Pink lightning. That would be cool, though. That, that okay, would... we'll have to see. Gonzalo Garcia. How can you afford all that state-of-the-art equipment being so young? All you got to do is work, 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 and then work some more. I've pretty much just worked and reinvested every single thing I've ever made back into my shop. That's pretty much the way you get what you want. Work, earn money, reinvest it. Work, earn money, reinvest it. And you will have what you need. Okay, the next one is from Torino Bob. Torino Bob. Torino Bob. As much as I'm enjoying the banana build, is that a 67 GTO in the back corner? Can we look forward to seeing the series on its reveal? I think it's actually a Le Mans, but what do you guys think? Should we add that to the list of content? You guys weren't supposed to see that. And you also weren't supposed to see the 1956 Porsche 356A Cabriolet Carrera either. One of six ever imported into the US. The only one in existence right now that is documented inside my shop. Shh, don't tell. You guys would love to see his back, the back lot. Future projects and a lot of uh, cars that people wish they had. There may or may not be three, maybe four, 1969 Chargers. Does anybody want to see some 1969 Dodge Chargers? Or 20s Model A's. Coronet 500. Or we have a few Dodge projects. Cab over. If you guys like the Q&A, let us know. We'll do some more. But that's going to be it. As always, we appreciate you guys, and thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye.